Hello everyone for the new uh, video. So this is the day five and six recap. I ended up putting both of these days together because not too much happened. So since last time we did change our bill completely. So no more lacerate. I've had, we did lacerate all the way up to Awakener, like right before the Awakener 5 uh, Cyrus fight. It was extremely slow. So I got really annoyed with the build and I pretty much just had enough. So I just ended up respecting. It took me about, and it was like 80 respect points, so it was very expensive to respect the whole entire build. So I deleted the whole right side of the tree. We changed up my ascendancy, so now I'm taking the bleep pops with the block. Uh, we also changed the bandit to a plus two skill points. And then I pretty much changed, like we got the cluster jewels now. We changed up a big chunk. We took resolute techniques, took away all of this. Took all the impel nodes away. Took all the fortify damage down here. Yeah, pretty much took a lot of changes. So I'm gonna say that the bleed version is 100 times better. It's much smoother to play. It's much faster map clear. Boss clear is even faster. It's overall, I recommend this one over the impale 100 times. If I did this one on leak start, I'd be in a much better sh a place right now. I'd be much farther. I probably don't know, I'd probably be done with Awakening Eight by now. So pretty much. Um, the gear is changed a little bit. It's still the same helm chest since day two. I haven't changed it at all. I was gonna change this yesterday because I had the um, the harvest uh, influence, and I bought a um, I level eighty six and I level one hundred uh, six lane thirty percent quality um, astral plate, and I just threw the essence on there and see what I got. And I'm getting warlord, so I just ended up selling for a three exalt profit. So I ended up just keeping this because this works no problem. The build works on this gear. It's still, so the six link did change. Now it's still Lacerade, the Multi-Strike, the Fortify, the Brutality, and the Melee Fizz. So instead of the M, uh, the um, Impale, it's now a Ruthless support. I got this for 10 Chaos, 21-23. We did same belt. Um, so belt didn't change at all. I should actually pop those off first. Uh, the helmet is still the exact same helmet. It's just um, enlightening. I don't have this level three yet, so I can't run Pride. So that's why I'm I'm running the anonymous Herald of Purity for the Taunt, uh, Main and Flesh and Stone. If I had the Pride, I put a Pride in here instead of Flesh and Stone. I just can't run Pride because Pride costs fifty percent mana reduce, and you'll end up having no mana whatsoever at level two. You need about level three or four in Lightning to probably do it. Probably level four to be safe. Even that's it, level four with the minus fifteen mana cost chest with the explode. It'll probably be my like end deal, my end game version of this game, uh, build, just to reduce the mana cost of this by fifteen. Have the Enlightened up three or four, depending on my, my intelligence. So then I can just run this no problem with the Pride. Watcher's Eye, all that kind of stuff. We'll go to that later, though. Shame Shield. It just has... um. So the Rage in here is just a placeholder for something else. It's probably going to end up being one of the Golems. I just hate summoning them because they die so fast. So I'll just put this in here to start leveling. But Word Banner and Blood and Sand are in here. On the Weapon, this I got real lucky on this. And it took me one, um, one perfect fossil to get 30. This has to be an item level 83 uh, C Jax. Well, it's an item 83 base with Elder if you want to get the bleeding. And the bleeding, I just did the usual same thing we did on the bow build. Uh, corroded and jagged, throw it on there, hope for the best. It took about five corroded fossils to get the 6% the chance to bleed and flex on this weapon, deal 100% 100% more damage. Once you get that mod, just look what you have. I just kept the weapon like this because at least it hit the mod. I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. But the item is about a 200 and 200 DPS, so it does work. It definitely is not that good, but it's something to get through and definitely can be upgraded from here. And right now, this is your Ancestor War Chief. Molten Shell just in here just because I know where else to put this thing. This technically doesn't even need it for the build. And then Blood Rage. The rings are... This is the exact same ring I have for Thlyle. This ring... I just needed dexterity, so all I did was search for my last resistance fixing, life, and dex. That's all I did, and I just bought this for 5 chaos. Still your uh, life chaos ring. The amulet, um, I anointed Command of Steel, which is this one right here, 
for an opalescence red and uh, what's it called opalescence amber so amber red and opalescent it's a cheap one to do like maybe like 10 chaos maybe and this was a this was an amulet I was working on for like I wanted to uh, metacraft with harvest but I never got around to finishing it so it, right now it's just a uh, fizz damage to attacks and that's pretty much it intelligence that's the whole ring so I just put um, some more chaos res on it to kind of help my chaos resistance but this ring definitely needs to have like fizz damage life chaos resistance that needed there's a lot of stuff that could be on this ring that needs to be eventually harvest craft it's just extremely hard I thought Harvest Craft was going to be real easy to get remove, add, or just flight add. And I haven't really seen those at all. I've seen more just the chaos spamming, like, higher chance of getting this. That's it. So, like, the boots, I just threw an essence fossil on, an essence, um, on this with dexterity to help my dex also. And I got lucky and I got two resistance. So it didn't really help. This, um, this base, it's item level 85. This was the design so I can get the uh, bleeding to inflict the old 10% uh, more. Faster, I think it is, but I never really got that far into crafting. Still, Rasha's coil. The gloves. These were actually pretty decent ones I got. This was also the, from the bases I had. This one I end up just doing my usual scour out until I got something good, and I got until I get attack speed. And I got lucky; I got melee damage on top of it. So these gloves alone give me 45% more melee damage and 15% attack speed, and I got some life on it, so it wasn't bad. And it's cast some cast res, but the gloves were very nice to get. That's pretty much it. So the gems, it's a cast damage taken, vulnerability. Um, this one you can either have it on low level so it casts with this, I believe, or just ca I don't, all I do is cast it myself. So pretty much what I'm doing, I'm running around, I'll just cast this on the end bosses or enemies and just kill them one hit. It's eventually a placeholder until I get the vulnerability on hit ring, which I still have in there. Your immortal call, cast damage taken, and increased duration setup. So increased duration also works with invulnerability, so that's why it's nice to have together. And it's still the same faster attacks, blood magic, leap slam, enduring cry. And all the gems now are 20-20, except for a couple of them. That's pretty much a lot of it. Because I think, yeah, that's from last character. Like I have the bases sitting here. Like, I still have the vulnerability on ring. I do have vulnerability. I just don't like the life roll on it. That's why I'm not using it technically yet. But it's still, it could be usable. It's a very good ring. Probably would sell for a decent amount too. But I do, like, this would be about ideal. But like, vulnerability on hit. Uh, fizz damage. Uh, flat damage. Chaos red. Stuff like that on there. And I still have the helmet to get the uh, minus nine nearby enemies. For fizz damage, it's just crafting it with good mods on top of it is what I'm having problems with. So like right now, the one I got is not bad for minion builds with life, resistance, melee life also, minion life. So it's a good one, it's just it's not what I want yet. Um, let's talk about clusters, actually. And at the end of this video, you'll see the Cyrus fight they did with this build, too. It was just slow, but it was doable. It's still my same Corrupted Blood Jewel. Just get any Corrupted Blood I Chaos Res on this one. This was from Ritual, so I just put it in here to have Chaos and Protect Blood Immune. Over here, uh, you want the Red Nightmare for block chance. This is what helps your block out, because with this build, with no flash open out, no anything really, you're only at 73% block. Technically, if you want to fix it, you get right here to fix it. Put your Thread of Hope here, and it's annoying at this point down here. And this will give you your max block. Because you can get this one, uh, you get this one for plus 5 to rage, attack speed, and go up here. You get this one for more attack speed, and there's one more you take also. One, two, no, just take those three. It's just an ideal thing, I just never got that far. Because when in doing that, you have to respect your build out a little bit to fix it from there. And the cluster jewels, this is where a lot of your damage comes from. This is why we hit for about a million on our bleed. So a large cluster I got, this is from Harvest, by me slamming the attack one, I think. No, I slammed speed on this. I got Field of Flight, Martial Power, Paralysis, uh, yeah, Ammo and Aggressive. Pretty much Field of Flight, Attack Speed, Leech. This is what makes it so you pretty much you can just le leech your mana nonstop. You don't need the leech node over 
somewhere over here. Over here anymore, because your cost of jewel gives you the leech. Your wound aggression, this is more damage. A lot more damage, actually. And um, you can, if you don't want this wound aggression, you can turn this, since you have wound aggression here and here anyway, you can turn this into the other leech one. So with the, uh, not the man, one that does mana, the one that does life. So you can pretty much have dual leech on yourself. And it'll be really good. It's what I was trying to get with my cluster jewel. I just got this one first. And this is just attack speed with damage. Very good. Both of the medium clusters are uh, fizz damage over time. And one is, but they both have wound aggression on there. This is why you don't really need it on the large also. So one has disordering wounds and the other one has wasting affliction. A wasting affliction, if I'm correct, is the harder one to get. This, these are both the same mods, so a little bit easier. This one's a little bit trickier to get. But pretty much like disordering wounds will give you um, pretty much chance to blind on your hits and also increase damage with bleeding. And wasting affliction gives you 20% um, pretty much 20% more damage and also your bleeding is 10% faster. Because if I'm correct, I don't think these are 100% anymore. So yeah, so pretty much here's a 25% chance to blind on hits. So you have 50% chance to blind everyone on hit, so it makes the build extremely strong. Especially when you get like, the vulnerability ring going. You have your usual crimson dance, the bleed, your work cries, your bleed section, your defensive layer of resistance, the axe. It's a pr and then, um, chance to block. This is the only reason I'm taking this note is for 1% chance to block. I If I had the Thread of Hope, I would probably drop this point. And just skip the 1% the chance to block. And just put that one point on Thread of Hope. And maybe just turn uh, down here to small cost, to small jewel. You probably want to get a 2 passive instead of a 3. Just to save the 1 scale point for the Thread of Hope. And if you can get F uh, Fetal, I think it is. The one that gives you 10% life and flat li 10 life, I think, also. It's much better. It's just extremely hard to get. So that's why I just went with this. Because it's 8% life and regen. So it was good enough for me. So that's pretty much the build. For pot. Pretty much what the build I wanted to get was all resistance positive, even chaos. Max block, max fizz. Because with all my stuff active... Uh, we're going to go E, R. Without pride, it's a little bit more... That's why my damage is a little bit off because of the prize not on here. But you can see when I activate all my flasks, must 65 fizz damage per mitigation, which is not bad. I eventually want that to be higher, but for now... I'm still using the exact same flask I've been using since day three, I think. When we changed them for the first time, and I just left them because they work. If I was going to change the flask, I would get rid of this um, the Enduring flask. You don't need it because you have so much leech on this build. And make this one the um, Lines I wore for your 25% more damage. I would technically change this one to the Bottle of Faith. I would fix this to be an actual movement speed flask. And then Freeze Immune, for now, this can stay here. Eventually, I would want to craft the um, cannot be frozen on the boots, and I would just get rid of the freeze immune, and just keep the uh, bubbling dodging flask. So I'll probably keep this for the rest of the game, for the rest of the league. And that's pretty much it. Still, Rasha's coil, the Sunder shields, the unnaturals, pretty much stuff like that. The unnatural is very nice. The belts, very good damage. Sunder shield helps out a lot with your um, giving you the chance to block and all that life. The only thing I'm going to tell you about this build is you're going to have problems with your intelligence and your decks. These are the two that are going to hurt the most if you want to run your gems on level 20. If you don't want your gems at level 20, it's much easier. It's just because of the blood rage pretty much that you would need such a high dex. If you want to run like a mid-range blood, um, blood rage instead for less and do, do less overall with damage with it, and you can cut your decks down. It's just you need decks on your gear a lot of places. And same with intelligence. You're going to need intelligence on your necklace and pretty much somewhere else because intelligence is going to get hit hard. And I also just realized that I think my skill tree might not be correct. Because I think what I was supposed to do is take this point, put it here for an attempt, attempt intelligence to help me out, and just put one point here. And then you could just technically skip down here, skip these two, let me just keep this one. Skip this point and probably put on intelligence. That would help out a little bit. And just add one more point here. We're just different ways with the tree. 
This tree was definitely not done. It's only level 92. But like pretty much I started getting these like these two points for more damage. If, if I got the threat of hope, I would just take these points out and probably start reducing my damage like the points up here and just go for the, the block, max block. But the build's extremely good. You'll see on the Cyrus fight that I unlinked at the end of this, this was my first Cyrus fight this league. And the gear wasn't, like the axe was a lot, um, didn't have the bleeding damage on it. The gloves were not these, are my old ones that I used from the beginning of the league. So the Damon had a lot of my stuff fixed. All the gems were a lot lower level, they're not 2020. But pretty much that's the end of my league start. I very, this build was very successful, I liked it a lot. The Well, the bleed version. If I, had a re if I did another league start with this build, I would probably just go straight bleed off the back, and I would have a lot more fun. And like upgrades with this build, there's so much upgrades you can do with this to make this build definitely a, um, a boss killer, mapper, all that kind of stuff. It's just I'm going to move on to another build that I'm going to keep all league to help other people on chat out quickly. But pretty much like all the gear, like your vulnerability hit on ring you can get, your minus 9 fizz damage helmets, uh, bench a bench three over 300 damage uh, weapon, just missing a lot of damage. The bottle of faith in here, the damage from the, there, an actual chest piece with uh, explode on it to make your mapping so much smoother. Um, pretty much if you're on awakening, just forgot as a two, get awakened brutality and melee fizz over anything. Those are the most intu most important uh, two uh, awakening gems first, and then go for your other 21, 23 gems. And multi strike isn't really needed. If you can pay a cheap amount on like 25 or like under 30 exalts for it, it's probably worth it. If you have to pay 100, it's not worth it at all. But a lot of the gems too is like if you can get your um, Watcher's Eye with Pride deals, I think it's 50% more damage, something like that. Then get your Pride on here once you get the Lion level 4 going and all that kind of stuff. It'll make your damage fly through the roof. This build has a tremendous amount of damage to go. I can probably get another easily couple million damage on this build if I actually finished it. But I'm very good. I'm very happy with the way this build is. So my, the next video after this probably won't be for a couple days. It'll be I'm gonna, pretty much I'm going to sell this character off right now. And then I'm going to buy all the gear for a new character and then start streaming a new character. So the stream I'll probably wait on just because I got a lot of bad comments from people watching my stream about me sitting there selling the gear off because they didn't want to watch it. So that's why I'm going to pretty much just do it off stream. Uh, POB in the description below. Come follow me on Twitch. And I hope everyone liked the video, and hope everyone had a good league start it's for tomorrow's video. At least doing this Wakener fight lets us go back to doing this. So this region's crossed off, which is our best region too. How boring and small. You want the atlas? Take it. It's yours. Ahori? I will burn to the See how 4k life does on this build. Because our weapon also is not correct. Our weapon is missing a lot of damage. Where is he? I can't find him. Oh, that might be why this not not working. I'm like pressing the correct buttons. Okay, yeah, this is gonna. I gotta get rid of this stance thing. Hold on. This explains why I'm pressing on buttons every second. Get rid of this. This is driving me nuts. There. I think I pressed that, I don't know how many times now. And actually, this totem won't work on this fight either. So we do this. Make this the regular totem. Make this one. There we go. I'm so used to doing this fight with golems, you actually don't do anything to pay attention. Oh, 
We actually can face tank his uh, die beam. I know the golem books. I pretty much spent all last league playing golems. I think last league we did golem. We did a 60, uh, what was it? 60 semi Akron project with golems. The um, 60 cortexes. Did a lot of golems last league. I guess fight's a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be. Shit, base change. Actually, Cyrus and Maps, well, Awakener 9 fight is going to suck. Because if I struggle with Awakener 8 fights already, I don't imagine Awakener 9 is going to be a disaster to fight. I don't know if Sir oh, they run the final phase? Oh, I didn't realize we did not pay attention whatsoever here. Our damage is still really bad though. At least the bleed is not as shitty. Yeah, this, this diving actually doesn't hurt us. Yeah, I can face tank it. We need attack speed though for our build for sure. I think once we get attack speed, then our build will be much better. Yeah, he's dead. Five whole chaos. 